Countdown, I'm Dr. Bernie, and today's question comes from a frustrated and concerned mother. She wrote, My eight-year-old son has a history of explosive outbursts. He becomes very angry, very fast, over minor issues. In fact, he often explodes at unexpected times when there are no apparent triggers. These mood swings made me worry that he had bipolar disorder, so I took him to the doctor, but they diagnosed him with ADHD. I did not think that outbursts like that were related to ADHD. Does that diagnosis make sense, or could it be something more serious, like bipolar disorder? I am confused and a little nervous to give him the medication the doctor prescribed because I don't want to make him worse. Well, frustrated and concerned mother, it's a fantastic question, and probably at the root of much of the work that Dr. Richard and I have done over the past decade and a half or so. So let's talk a little bit about explosive outbursts. And then, um, you know, certainly there's a lot more questions that I would love to be able to ask you about your particular child's situation. Uh, but what I'll do instead is, uh, again, talk a little bit about explosive outbursts and then kind of uh, talk about it diagnostically or what explosive outbursts look like uh, based upon different diagnoses. Um, explosive outbursts can happen for a variety of reasons, many different reasons, and sometimes it's really difficult, especially with children, to try to figure out why the outbursts are happening. Now, part of that difficulty has to do with the fact that children ha relatively have poor insight. They really don't have the ability to, to reflect inward and, and look at what's going on inside their body to say, well, I feel this way and so I behave that way. Um, it's really difficult for them to make some of those kinds of connections. And as a result, you know, we're left, we're often left trying to figure out what's going on on the inside so that we can deal with what's going on on the outside. Again, the, much of the work that Dr. Richard and I have done over the past 15 years or so has been really focused on this type of issue. Um, many children present with these kinds of challenging behaviors and depending on the doctor or psychiatrist that they go to, they may end up with a diagnosis of ADHD, as your child did, or they could end up with a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, or well, I'll talk in a few minutes about a relatively new diagnosis called disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Ooh, it's a mouthful, but we call it DMDD. Um, that's a relatively new diagnosis, but um, it, it's sort of a compilation of behaviors and symptoms that uh, in the past were, were really associated with bipolar disorder, um, or what they would call at the time early onset bipolar disorder. So explosive outbursts really aren't rare. Um, they happen. I mean, you know, you know, happening in an eight-year-old uh, looks one way, but when very similar behaviors happen in, say, a two-year-old, um, there, there's, there's not a lot of um, atypicality with that. You know, we, we, we look at two-year-olds and we expect them to sort of be a little bit emotional and have some difficulty regulating their behaviors like that. And so we have the two-year-old temper tantrums. Well, again, when they happen in eight-year-olds, it's very different. They're bigger, they're stronger, uh, they're louder, and they usually have a much more colorful vocabulary um, in, in by, that, by that age. So it is a very challenging behavior to deal with as the child gets older. So let's talk a little bit about different diagnoses and how explosive outbursts could present with these different diagnoses. All right, so we'll start with ADHD. Now, ADHD uh, is characterized by that inattention, hyperactivity, uh, but the piece that really plays a role here with explosive outbursts is the symptoms of impulsivity. Children with ADHD, uh, it's, ADHD is a frontal lobe disorder, which means that they have a, a hard time regulating behaviors, uh, behaviors in general. And emotion, many times, is a behavior, uh, an internal behavior, but it is a behavior nonetheless that the frontal lobes are supposed to help regulate. In individuals with ADHD, unfortunately, the frontal lobes don't do a really good job of regulating all of that. And so you have these emotional outbursts that can happen because it, that those behaviors uh, get through and the frontal lobes aren't able to regulate them. Now, the key, though, is when we see 
explosive outbursts in children with ADHD, they seem to have a very uh, apparent presentation. It, we, we can tell when it's a impulsive ADHD type of explosive outburst because they are like fireworks. Uh, they hit, they're magnificent, but then they're gone almost as quickly as they show up. They, they don't linger. They don't stay around for a, a long time. They, they are the flash in the pan, uh, flash in the pan. They hit and they're gone and they're done. That is because it's strictly the impulsivity problem. The behavior, the emotion is there. It gets through. It happens. It's done. No resentment, no frustration afterwards. The child then pretty much returns back to normal. Now, he may be sorry afterwards. He may be regretful afterwards and those kinds of things. However, the ADHD child typically, when he has an outburst like that, typically returns back to normal and is ready to move on and go have fun and do the other things that uh, he was already doing. So uh, that when we see explosive outbursts in ADHD children, that's what it looks like. It, it, it's that flash in the pan, that firework that hits, maybe huge, maybe magnificent, but it's gone just as quickly. Now, another diagnosis, and, and you, you mentioned this diagnosis in your letter, is bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar disorder is pretty rare in children, especially children as young as eight years old. In fact, there are many who believe that, eight, that bipolar disorder cannot really manifest in an individual until at least puberty. Now, I don't know that I believe that. I've certainly seen children with discernible cyclic episodes that happen even when they're you know, eight, seven, eight years old. However, the majority of kids who have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, it probably isn't bipolar disorder. It doesn't meet the classical definition of bipolar disorder. And, and the reason what I and what I mean by the classical definition of bipolar disorder is that it doesn't meet the requirements that our diagnostic manual set forth for bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar disorder is different than depression, not just because of the title, but because bipolar disorder is characterized by manic episodes. And maybe I'll do a whole podcast sometime on bipolar disorder. But, but for now, to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder, one has to have a manic episode, at least one. If you've had one manic episode, that's it. Your diagnosis now is bipolar disorder. Uh, but a manic episode has to last at least four days. And for it to only last four days means that it's what we call hypomanic. Now, this time frame, of course, is restricted or, or assumed based upon the fact that you don't receive uh, immediate acute medical attention. You know, if, if a person goes into a manic episode and they begin to act very uh, dangerously and they end up being hospitalized, that manic episode may only last for 24 to 48 hours, but it's because they're now hospitalized and they're being treated. Certainly, that still counts as a manic episode, even though the time duration is shorter. If left to their own devices, however, a manic episode must last at least four days for what we call hypomania, but up to a week, at least a week, for what we call mania. When we think about explosive outbursts in individuals with bipolar disorder, again, what we have to identify are these discernible, identifiable, clearly demarcated manic episodes. If we don't have those manic episodes, then it's probably not bipolar disorder. Now, manic episodes can be characterized by, you know, again, chronic irritability, uh, elevated expansive mood or energy, uh, poor sleep, uh, hypersexuality. Uh, not that we necessarily see that in an eight-year-old, but it's, it's part of the diagnostic criteria. So mania is a very clear set of behaviors that we see, set of symptoms that we see. Again, it's really difficult for eight-year-olds and children in general to really talk about some of those internalized thoughts and feelings and, and motivators. But 
when we think about bipolar disorder, that's what has to be present. So if, you, if your child doesn't have those kinds of symptoms, then it's probably not bipolar disorder. Depression is another uh, diagnosis that we will see explosive outbursts with. Now with depression, we typically consider depression to be this um, depressed, sad, down, um, you know, maybe sleeping more than usual, maybe not sleeping very much at all, but sort of slow moving, sad, tired, crying, those types of things. Well, in children and adolescents, depression sometimes manifests as irritability. And that irritability sometimes is a, a precursor to explosive outbursts. And in fact, when I'm talking with children and adolescents who have anger related problems, we talk about them getting mad. And I will ask them questions like, is it mad mad or is it sad mad? Because sometimes in children and adolescents, that sadness leads to anger. It leads to frustration because they don't really know how to manage it. They don't really understand it. They don't really know how to cope with it. And so it leads to frustration and anger and irritability and those kinds of things that we see as explosive outbursts sometimes. So if we have a situation where your child is depressed and for depression, for it to count as depression, uh, technically, it has to last at least two weeks. So mania is one week, depression is two weeks. If there's not that identified depressive episode, then it's probably not depression. Uh, again, if we go back to that ADHD diagnosis, the kid is typical, the kid is normal, his normal self uh, most of the time but then you have these spikes of outbursts those spikes of elevated behavior that happen but then the child goes right back to normal with depression you have this depressive phase that happens where those uh, those explosive outbursts present but the child remains somewhat depressed for that period of time and again if the child has those kinds of symptoms, then maybe it's a mood-related disorder, probably depression. Now, I mentioned earlier about this newer diagnosis of disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Now, that diagnosis is pretty new. It just came in the newest edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that was released in 2013, so it's only about three years old. But there was research and and investigations about it uh, for many years before that. Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, what I'm just going to say DMDD just to make it uh, faster, is a disorder characterized by chronic irritability. Now this is irritability in a child that is just ever present. Parents of children with DMDD describe their child as being irritable almost all the time. They use phrases like, we feel like we have to walk on eggshells. We have to be very careful about how we say anything to him because if we say it the wrong way or present information in, in the, a way that frustrates him, he will explode. And these explosions, unlike the ADHD explosions that are you know, seconds long, maybe a couple minutes long, these outbursts last tens of minutes, if not 30 minutes, if not an hour or more. These outbursts are very significant, very disruptive, very destructive, and they cause a lot of problems because they, because not only because of their intensity, how severe they are, but because of their duration, they just last and last and last. And many times parents have a really difficult time sustaining any type of appropriate response to kids with DMDD who are having an explosive outburst. As you described, these outbursts tend to happen with little provocation, sometimes no apparent provocation to us, but to kids, but to the child's biology, if you will, they explore or they, they experience some type of threat that they're responding to. And, and this irritability just 
hits and it is zero to 90 and it stays at 90 until usually until they just are wore out and that's another characteristic that we typically see it's not diagnostic but we typically see that in children with dmdd that after this prolonged outburst the child is very tired uh, sometimes apologetic but but not usually not they're not usually apologetic afterwards but they have uh, a lot of fatigue afterwards because it's just so physically and emotionally draining i mean imagine being at that level of frustration at that level of irritability and agitation for 30 minutes to an hour uh, it is very emotionally draining uh, so it's very challenging again it's a, a newer diagnosis back about 10 years ago or so those same children would have been diagnosed with early onset bipolar disorder now we knew at the time that that wasn't the best diagnosis but it was really all that we had diagnostically to to use but now we have this dmdd diagnosis and we're seeing it a little bit more often but again dmdd explosive outbursts are very different than adhd explosive outbursts now the fifth diagnosis is anxiety and you might think well, anxiety what why would anxiety cause explosive outbursts well that would be a great question as well uh, ADHD, uh anxiety causes explosive outbursts for many of the same reasons that depression does it's a feeling of discomfort a feeling of you know, concern worry fear stress in general that the child really doesn't have the skills or equipment to deal with and so they respond viscerally they, they respond emotionally and they oftentimes have a have a really hard time managing it there have been many kids that I've that I worked with again earlier in my career who had some of these explosive outbursts and we struggled and struggled and struggled trying to figure out what was going on those kids are now adults and when we talked about their symptoms back then and what was going on with them back then they can now look back and say man that all of that was anxiety I was so stressed out now at the time they couldn't articulate that they couldn't describe that but they these kids had so much fear and anxiety inside of them that it just had them on edge all the time and in, in a very real way that chronic stress made them easily triggered into a fight-or-flight type of response and so it didn't take very much at all for their body to switch over to fight or flight and so you know these emotional outbursts were in a very real way fighting for your life these are survival behaviors they will say and do mean things emotionally raw things because they're fighting for their life so anxiety is a another diagnosis or another etiology for some of these explosive outbursts and again it's very difficult it, probably of all the ones we've talked about so far anxiety is one of the most difficult ones to identify because again depending on the level of insight that the child has he or she may not be able to articulate that very well at all now the final thing we're going to talk about is really related to relationships and and socialization many children who are under socialized have explosive outbursts children who have poor attachment now frustrated and concerned mother i'm not sure there was nothing that you described that suggests that this was the case for your child however in general what we will see at times is that parents who have not been able to develop a very strong and healthy connection with their child end up having children with these very poor attachments that are emotionally dysregulated because they don't know how to deal with the stresses and issues of relationships so in those kinds of situations they may be the children may have uh, they, they may get close to other people they may have problems with getting too close or too connected to people very quickly uh, they what I hear from parents sometimes is that he knows no stranger and what that means to me is that he has not learned that 
you know, these people are the people who take care of me and are safe and, and that kind of thing. And then there are other people. Every child, every child goes through a period of separation anxiety. Now, the, the intensity of that separation anxiety varies greatly. However, every child goes through that. So if a child doesn't develop adequate attachment to a primary caregiver, sometimes they develop what we call an attachment disorder. And so because they just don't know how to make those connections, how to make those relationships. When they don't know how to make those relationships, they tend to go one of two ways. Either they become overly dependent on others, meaning that they get really close really fast. Uh, in situations like that, I've had kids who should certainly have separ uh, separation anxiety, some stranger anxiety, come into my office you know, at three, four years old, and immediately come and try to sit on my lap, ask if they can come home with me, and those kinds of things. Behaviors that we should not really be seeing in a three or four year old when they're entering uh, or encountering a stranger. The other direction is much more irritable, much more of a tendency to push others away. They, they, they in, instead of trying to pull people close to try to make those relationships, they tend to push others away because they see relationships as dangerous, as unhealthy, as unsafe. And so they, they keep people away because they don't want to be emotionally damaged any more than they already have been. Those children oftentimes will have some of that same explosive outbursts, some, some of those same emotional rages sometimes that we see with these other diagnoses and things that I've talked about. They will have some of those same behaviors. Those symptoms are, uh, again, I talked about how challenging anxiety is to identify. These behaviors, uh, explosive outbursts rooted in these kinds of issues is much more difficult to treat. Those atta that early attachment is so critical and if, if it doesn't happen in the first couple years, it's really exceedingly difficult to develop later on. And so we really have to do a lot of intensive psychotherapy to try to help individuals who have been through that, who have had difficulty developing those attachments. We have to work really hard to help them um, understand the nature of relationships and feel safer in them. So uh, again, it's very challenging, very challenging to diagnose, uh, but we do see some of those same explosive outbursts in those kinds of situations. So, okay, frustrated and concerned mother. I hope that helped. I hope that you're able to see some of the different behaviors to help maybe uh, feel more comfortable with the physician's diagnosis. Uh, I know that it's really challenging and it's really difficult when you have an eight-year-old and you're, you're thinking about medication or you're thinking about something being wrong or something that needs to be treated. It's really difficult to, to deal with that as a parent, but hopefully the physician was able to identify some of these things, differentiate these behaviors and symptoms, get the diagnosis correct and offer the right medication. If you have any other questions, please write in and let me know. and. I would love to hear from you and, and see how it goes with, with your child and as you're continuing with this treatment. So, all right. Well, I think that that's everything. I really appreciate you guys listening. If you get a chance, jump on iTunes, write us a review, rate us. We'd love to see that. We had a great new review by a mother that seemed, uh, it was very nice. It was a very nice, nice review. So, uh, I encourage you to jump on if you have the opportunity. It just increases our awareness uh, on iTunes and, and lets other people find us so that they can hopefully join in on the conversation and be part of the discussion. So, all right. Until next time, I'm Dr. Bernie. Have a great day and forget to be afraid.